just let me out That clock keeps ticking like a metronome And my thoughts keep telling me to get me home But my balls keep telling me to let me out Oh, just let me out History has taught us that we can learn from the past. Now, after that null statement, we can begin. The discussion today will be on the subject of modern Rolex, but with a twist. I thought it would be fun to assimilate what we're seeing today in the watch world to a similar time in our history. Stick around, you'll enjoy this. As always, if you would like a topic or thought of yours surrounding watches to be discussed by a designer, please comment what you would like below and I'll write them up. Now, I'll preface this first by saying that I don't believe that watches and tulips go hand in hand. I'm not dumb enough, and neither should you be, to believe that suddenly they will become worthless overnight. Second, this discussion will be revolving around modern Rolex and not vintage Rolex, because I see them as two completely different ends of the spectrum. To me, modern Rolexes fall under the umbrella of speculation at this point in time, where vintage Rolex are considered to be antiques, and can therefore be justified like any other antique as a collectible. More on that subject later. I want to take us back to the 17th century, to the Netherlands of all places. The tulip trade, more commonly known as tulip fever or tulip mania, lasted for only a year, and during the time saw a massive economic rise and fall. Today it is considered to be the first documented speculative bubble that we have become accustomed to seeing ever since. Just to give you some perspective, at their height, one tulip could sell for 10 times a year's wages for the common man. Let that sink in. The studies that came from these events were fascinating. One of the comments was that the common crowd mentality would be to often behave irrationally when it came to buying and selling. Sort of like how we see people react in an auction house today. Except during that time, most of these people didn't have the money to spend and usually acted on impulse. People would sell their houses if it meant that they could afford a bulb, which they hoped would sell for more than they were purchased for. This was a time when people became rich overnight and vice versa. It was a bandwagon of ridiculous proportions. Now, some tulips were better than others. They were called breakers, a term used to coin a virus called the tulip breaking virus that caused the color of white to run through the flower. A handful of these were the most sought after and the most desirable at the time was the Semper Augustus. To this day, it remains the most expensive tulip to ever be sold. Of course, the rarer the tulip, the more sought after they were. There was less supply of them, and so their demand increased, and so did their prices. Now, what is interesting is that even to this day, there is no clear answer about how or why the mania went from being so domineering to virtually disappearing in a few months, from February to May. Some studies have said that propaganda turned the tides, others have said that it had to do with land occupation, and many other theories also surfaced. But what it all comes down to, at least I believe, is speculation and the word of mouth. One person selling, so we must all sell. Dump the stock. With everything that I've just said, now you can understand why I find this to be such a cool anecdote. Back in the day, a working man could afford a submariner with a month's wages, but nowadays, it would take between two to three years to pay the amount for the watch, realistically speaking. And looking at the lineup of modern Rolex watches, some are extremely sought after and are in high demand. So they are artificially removed and their prices continue to increase. The more they are wanted, the more valuable they become and the less rational people become when spending ridiculous amounts of money on them. This concept, though separated by over 300 years, is still so prevalent in our society today. And I have to ask myself, with all of the resources available and the knowledge we have procured over the generations, why are people still buying into such things? The answer, I believe, is that platforms, very much like this one, and supposed influencers, have the power to sway people's opinions so vehemently that reason is left on the wayside. Everything that is spoken about here is a form of marketing, whether you like it or not. And if you hear the same words a few too many times, you begin to believe them. So with that out of the way, let's talk about modern Rolex. They are desirable because they are desirable. Because of their track record and their vintage grandparents, it is safe to say that they will always maintain their value. I don't like saying that they will gain in value because that again is speculative. But as far as watches go, 
They, unlike tulips, are made to last lifetimes. They are built to outlive us, where a tulip cannot. One thing that I need to clarify about vintage pieces compared to their modern counterparts is that vintage pieces are entirely unique. You won't be able to buy a modern 114060 no-date Submariner with a tropical and spider dial, patinaed loom and faded bezel insert in 50 years from now. Vintage watches, as we know, can be considered as piece-unique watches nowadays because of their defects. Modern pieces will not have that in the future. The whole concept of defects has been phased out with the modern pieces. But today the demand for modern pieces are in part because of the speculation that they will continue to rise in value like their vintage counterparts. What I am more interested in seeing is whether this whole speculative bubble that many talk about is founded at all and whether the value of these modern pieces will fall one day soon. More importantly is how, because already some pieces, like the Kermit Submariner, seem to have dipped greatly over the last few months. Rolex is now resupplying all of their stores with the pieces that were impossible to find last year. Why is this the case? What is causing the shift? Do they feel like they have overstepped the mark and are losing customers to other brands? The Submariner, the Hulk, the Pepsi, the Batman, the Ceramic Daytona. All of these watches have varying levels of rarity. All of them are sought after. But in the end, you need to ask yourself, are you buying these because of everyone else telling you to buy them, which in turn is increasing their business? And are you buying them just for a return on what you bought them for? It is a strange, strange subject, and one that I honestly wish would disappear. I dream for a day when I can walk into any Rolex boutique try on and buy any watch in their catalogue that I'd like. Is that too much for a customer to ask? Maybe it is.